Near the town of Livingston, Scotland, forestry worker Robert Taylor is carrying out an inspection of the property under his care, like he does every morning. The Detchment Wood Forest was owned by a housing corporation, and Robert Taylor was one of the key people who looked after this forest. Robert Taylor's duties involved monitoring the forest. He would have to make sure, for example, that fences were properly maintained and that basically everything was running smoothly. Hey, back. Back, on it. Robert Taylor was a war hero. He had served with distinction in the Second World War as a tank driver. Uh, he'd been present at the evacuation at Dunkirk, and he'd been a part of D-Day. All right, buddy, let you come. You wish for a day's work? Come on, lass. Robert Taylor habitually took his dog with him on these sorts of work days. He and his dog went everywhere. The dog was almost part of the team. Looks like we got trespassers on the property, Bonnie. Let's keep our eyes open. I think it's fair to say that he would have known these woods like the back of his hand. He was a bit extremely familiar with them and was an extremely well-respected member of that community. Robert continues his search for possible trespassers, heading deeper into the forest. Let's go in here, Lee. Come on. He'd walked maybe half a mile or so into the woods. What is it, Bonnie? And at that point, his dog, which was normally pretty well behaved, started going crazy, uh, barking, uh, acting as if it was in distress. His dog seems to be reacting to something. Settle down! See something, buddy? Is there something out there? And as he goes a little bit further, he gets to a small clearing. Hello? Something attracts his attention, but it's not right in front of him. It's on the other side of the clearing. It's like it's there, and it's not there. It's like there's a distortion in the air. At times, he can see the trees at the far side of the clearing, and then at times, it looks like there's some indistinct shape blocking out those trees. He could perhaps be described as, say, uh, like a, a heat air shimmer that you would see in the desert. When all of a sudden, the blurriness, the distortion, disappears. And he can make out a, a clear object. What in God's name? This is like nothing he's ever seen before in his life. Robert Taylor has found some kind of intruder in the Detchmont woods. But this is no ordinary trespasser. <laughs> Robert Taylor, at that point, thought, this is it. This thing, whatever it is, may kill me. Forestry worker Robert Taylor goes into the woods with his dog, looking for a suspected trespasser. What is it, funny? But a short hike in, he discovers a strange spherical object. What in God's name? He's a war hero. He's a military veteran. He's highly trained 
incredibly brave. He doesn't run from this thing. He wants to get a closer look. You can see for the first time what this thing is. And it's a broadly circular shaped object with a kind of rim around it. He describes this object as being a metallic sphere with protrusions underneath, like could be landing legs. And he hears this strange noise that appears to be coming from inside this object. It's almost like banging noise. Stay, Bonnie, stay! After the object started making these noises, two smaller objects seemed to emerge somehow and came out of the object. They had on them these kind of spikes. He likens them to like Second World War mines, something which he'd have been very familiar with during his wartime service. These two small objects come hurtling towards him across the ground. And as the spikes hit the ground, there was this kind of popping sound. He was seeing something beyond his frame of reference. He'd never dealt with anything like this. Robert tried to run, but at that point, the two smaller objects basically attached themselves to his legs. The spikes were digging into his trousers. There's a kind of noxious odor that he smells, a really repugnant, acrid smell. He comes to believe that some noxious gas was released. Not only are these objects attached to his trousers, they're now dragging him back towards the main object. <laughs> Most UFO sightings are just lights in the sky, but this is an interaction. He's being attacked. <laughs> and at that point, he passed out. Robert Taylor later calculated that he'd been unconscious for around 20 minutes. He could only assume that during that missing 20 minutes, he had been inside this object. When he came to, he tried to get to his feet, but he stumbled. I and mean, he was clearly still weak and disorientated. He looked around, the object had gone. But as he examined the clearing, he did find some strange markings, two different types, uh, some round holes and some more horizontal lines. <laughs> Clearly something had been in that clearing. Taylor first decided to try and call for help and he went to use the radio in his vehicle but he found that his voice wouldn't come out he could hardly speak Robert Taylor assumed that the reason that he was unable to speak at this point was that it was an after effect of the noxious substance the gas that had been released <laughs> Robert Taylor's bizarre story is not easily dismissed. Robert Taylor is one of those kind of great witnesses that you find absolutely just tells the truth as it happens. He's the kind of person that you would want on your jury service, not one prone to make up stories. Police investigate Robert Taylor's sighting, treating his experience with the spiked objects as an assault. A forensic analysis of Robert Taylor's trousers finds tears in the fabric from bottom to top. A finding consistent with the spheres having taken hold of Robert from below. 
Robert Taylor fully recovers his voice within hours. A medical exam shows no physical abnormalities, but does identify abrasions on his hips, consistent with the tear marks in his trousers. The marks in the dirt are still visible when police investigate the clearing. Subsequent tests on soil samples provide no clear answer as to the cause. Accounts of the incident in the media draw hundreds of curiosity seekers, forcing police to cordon off the area, closing it off from public view. But just occasionally, there is physical evidence to back up reports of close encounters. On the morning of November the 9th, 1979, forestry worker Bob Taylor walked down this woodland track outside Livingston New Town near Edinburgh. He rounded a corner and was astonished to be confronted by an unearthly object. A huge thing with a big round dome, a very dark grey colour, and it had a, a big flange going all the way around. I could see arms sticking out of this flange with what I took to be blades on the top. Later he described what he'd seen to a local newspaper artist who drew this sketch. As I stood here, there was Two balls came out, two balls, I'd think they'd be about three feet in diameter, with about six spikes. And they were rolling on these spikes, and they came right up beside me. And I remember feeling a tug at that time. And a very powerful smell, a choking sort of smell. And that was it. He crawled up this path and staggered home to be met on the doorstep by his bewildered wife. He looked terrible when he came in the door and he just stood at the door and I said, have you had an accident with your lorry? And he said, no, I've been attacked. And I said, what with? And he said, a spaceship. And I said, oh goodness me, there's no such a thing as a spaceship. I'm going to phone the doctor. You must have fell and hurt your head. He looked quite shocked, and he, he was drained, he was right white, and his face was dirty, and he had a red scar here. And uh, his clothes were all dirty, and his trousers, and then he told me his trousers had been torn. The station barked. The police were called, and they discovered inexplicable track marks at the scene of the incident. On examining the area, I found two track marks in approximately 40 holes in the ground. And these are the track marks here, and these are the 40 holes. Uh, since then, I've photographed the holes. This is a photograph of the hole here. This is the holes that measured approximately three and a half inches. And this other photograph here, you can actually see the trade marks which correspond to the marks here. These markings and tracks were actually inside this area here that's fenced off, uh, and there was Definitely no other tracks leading to or from this area. These are the trousers worn by Mr. Taylor. As you can see, they're of fairly heavy material. We have a tear on the left, just below the pocket, and one on the right trouser leg, again just below the pocket. These marks are consistent with the material having been pulled up while the trousers were being worn. Well, I'm pretty certain that, that day that I saw a spaceship sitting here. We must accept the story of Mr. Taylor. He is a very highly respected member of the community, a man of high integrity, and not one likely to invent such a story. <laughs>